everybody, this is Scott Hubs back with Agent Mastermind. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So honored to have you guys here and look forward to sharing with you guys and, uh, one of my favorites. I have uh, spent a lot of time on this and what I'm going to share with you today is, and this is one of my favorite codes, it's not enough to be busy, so are the ants. The question is, what are you busy about? So that's from Henry David. So I'm going to share a couple of things with you today. One is Gmail, which is just an unbelievable email system, but it's kind of like buying a Ferrari only for the cup holders. If you're using Gmail just to send and receive. So I'm going to share with you Boomerang for Gmail, which is a, one of my ultimate favorites. I'm going to share with you a new one that you might not have heard of yet. It's called PowerBot for Gmail. It's going to help you drastically clean out your inbox in a really quick fashion and a, a couple other things. And then how PowerBot ties into Evernote and guess what? Dropbox. So last week we did a class on Evernote. If you haven't signed up yet, I would highly recommend getting Evernote on all your devices, but more importantly, getting with the loan professional that sent you to this class to get a recording of the last five or six classes. We've covered some really, really good stuff. Already seeing some results and hearing about results from past uh, from agents being on the call. So that's what I'm going to cover today. So time. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but we all have the same 24 hours every single day. How is it that some people just get more done? I don't, you know, it's just because they time block and they find ways to systematize stuff or delegate stuff or just delete it all together because it's not important or money making activity. So what I'm going to ask you to do is focus for 20, like for the next hour or 45 minutes to an hour on this class because this class can literally free up 30 minutes, 45 minutes a day. Some people, maybe even more, and we're talking two, two and a half hours a week. And if you think about it, two weeks could free up almost a whole day of activity just by just by organizing and delegating stuff. So, like, so that's what I'm going to show you. So only one thing at a time. I don't know if you know this, but I looked it up. And multitasking is, is like by definition is not physically possible. And a lot of people think that they can, but you can't. You're only shifting it. So the challenge for you and you're going to have to answer this, and I'm going to cover this at the very end of the class. So only check your email at 11 and 4 o'clock. Of course, we all have it on our phone, so it's almost addictive. It's kind of like, wouldn't it be funny if we were all standing out by, the, by our actual physical mailboxes, opening the mailbox every 30 seconds? It'd be kind of funny, wouldn't it? It'd just be kind of funny to do it just to show a video. But So challenge for you, pick a time that you're going to do it, and then I'm going to give you some kind of guidance on how we do it so we get really laser-focused stuff done during the day, all right? So 10 reasons that Gmail is so, so powerful and so useful is it has a lot of different features. And some of them are less spam, search, there's a search function I'm going to share with you, there's a conversation view if you want to talk, a built-in chat, on the go, it's on your mobile, there's tons of free space, in fact, it's one of the highest spaces available for any email systems, um, has a phone that you can use, priority inbox, I'm not going to cover too much about that because I'm going to show you how to get out of your inbox. It's secure and the best part is it's free. So why Gmail? Let me just share a couple things with you. I don't know if you know this or not, but every time you send an email, you should be thinking about them as a contact. So Gmail automatically puts people into your contact database, all right, inside Gmail. And if you, of course, you can turn that off if you want, but it automatically does it. I believe Outlook does that as well. But make sure, if you're sending an email to a new client, make sure that that's going into your contacts, okay? Calendar in the clouds, I love this. And of course, you can share the calendars with uh, your partners or assistants so they know where you're at, what you're doing. And I even have people fill in my calendars for me. So task list in the clouds, if you want to create a task list, it's in the clouds, it's visible, it's, it's available on all your devices. Filters so you can delegate 99% of your inbox, uh, literally, and I'm going to show you how to do that. The hardest part for everybody on this call, and for most, the last time I did this was about six months ago, and a lot of people, several, have, have thousands of emails. You go in there and it says 3,000 emails. The hardest part is literally just archiving 100% of that and starting fresh with some of the stuff I'm going to share with you today, okay? Uh, filters to remove the garbage, spam, and delegate it. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's free, love that part. And documents are in the clouds. We're gonna have a class on this eventually, so if you're not uh, putting stuff in the clouds and you're writing stuff still on your desk on notepads, it's gonna be tough to go, you know, you gotta drive back to the office at eight o'clock at night to get them if they're not in the cloud. So keep old email accounts. There's no reason to have more than one email 
just have all your emails going to one email, one login, one password, one email address so that they all come into it. And that's really easy to set up with Gmail. Have all your emails come to one email in Gmail. I just talked about that. Tons of storage. Can archive old emails. Uh, you uh, Using Gmail for marketing, uh, if you want to market like an area and you want to track the emails coming in, a real easy way to do it is to go get a free email from Gmail. This one I did was homebuyerbook at gmail.com, and I gave away a free homebuyer book, and all you had to do was email me at homebuyerbook at gmail.com, and I set up an automated response that emailed you back the free ebook. All right? So just thinking outside the box how you can use Gmail. Now that email, if you email me at homebuyerbook at gmail.com, comes to my, my, I call it the mothership email. So I didn't have to go check another email. I just knew when it came in, and so it worked pretty good. Same search function as Google, multiple emails, canned responses for quick response, less time in the inbox. If you find that you're sending or want to send the same email, so you get a new buyer in, and the, and the buyer, of course, you always send a welcome, look forward to working with you type email, and it's pretty much the same thing except for their name and the, the, the subject line or name is like, hey, hey, Scott, then you could set up a canned response, a series of them, to send out as soon as you meet with somebody. You don't have to type the whole thing over and over and over again. It just saves you a ton, a ton of time, right? So I'm going to show you that, and then so much more. So let's get started. So if you don't have a Gmail account, or you don't have a Google account for that matter, I would highly recommend going to Google and signing up for a Gmail account. If you don't have one, just click on the little Gmail button, and it will let you log in and, of course, set up a name or create one. All right? I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. Now, here's where it gets fun. Now, a lot of people, this is, the, this is going to be the tough part for most. And, and I'm going to kind of jump forward a little bit, and then I'm going to jump back. So a lot of people think that they got to set up labels for every single thing, every buyer, every seller. Every, I mean, every single thing you can think of, old buyers, old sellers, maybe neighborhood marketing, maybe strategies, maybe this, whatever it is. The, the cool thing about Gmail is that the search function is just like Google. You can literally search, if you remembered a number inside an email, it's going to pull up an email with that. So in saying that, all I have is two labels, and of course, all mail is just necessary in case you got one that goes to spam. You can see the all meals, uh, all the emails there. So reply and waiting. And I'm going to explain these two, these two folders. This is really all you ever need in Gmail. Trust me on this. And I'll show you why and how, how powerful this is, OK? So reply and waiting. All right, let me just explain these. So reply is, and this is what kind of what my inbox looks like, and, I, and, and I'll tell you later. So Gbox Zero, this is, what it used, this, this is what it looks like now. And I'll show you today. I sent a little picture of it this morning. So, when you go here, you're going to want to go to this little gear in the top right, this little gear right here to set these labels up to create them. You want to create a reply, and you want to create a waiting, OK? And I'm going to show you why you want to do this. And it makes total sense once you, once you uh, hear this strategy, OK? So click on the gears, click on settings, and it's going to open up. And you'll see a little thing called labels. It would be general and then labels. So you're going to click on the labels. And you're going to scroll down a little bit, and it's going to say create new label. And you're going to put in reply, and you're going to click create. You're going to do the same thing for waiting. Waiting, create. All right? And then these little things are going to show up. Reply and the waiting labels are going to show up. And you'll, you can change the colors. And I'll give you some recommendations on why I color them differently, because I can so you can see them right away and when they come in. So let me just, I'll show that with you in just a minute. So you can change the color. And then the last thing you want to do is you want to click this little arrow button uh, right next to If you hold your mouth, it's kind of hidden. But if you click this arrow button, and then you click Show, it'll actually stay here for you. So you can slide these things, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second, OK? So Reply and Waiting are the two labels you want to set up. Real easy to do. And let's talk about why you want to do this. So Reply. Someone is requesting you to do something with or without a deadline, OK? Examples include submitting reports, verifying something, and taking on a task. Someone is asking you to respond to something, but it requires more deep thought than just like responding to something and answering a question. So when somebody sends you an email, for starters, they're not expecting, like, if, like here's a perfect example. If the house is on fire, and I know the email address of the person that lives in that house, I'm probably not going to send them an email saying, hey, dude, your house is on fire, right? So. People don't expect an immediate response. If they expect an immediate response, they're going to pick up the phone and get you on the phone and leave a voicemail. That's a more urgent message. So if you can 
some way, shape, or form, figure out ways to only check your email certain times of the day. I'm telling you, it'll just free your mind and it'll allow you to focus on money-making activities. So someone is asking you to respond to something, but it requires more deep thought from you to respond. Examples include people asking for your opinion or asking about a availability for an event, showing, uh, maybe a showing, a weekly report, whatever. Um, that might have to entail a little more work on that. So after you've replied to emails in this folder, you then move them to archive folder. You don't save them into another folder, it's just you move them into archive. Now, just so you know, even if you delete an email in Gmail, it still stays there. So we'll talk about that in a second. Within Gmail, it's easy. You remove the reply label by clicking on the X next to the label, and I'll show you what that means. So see this little X right here? If once you reply or once you, like if you're waiting, and I'll explain this in a second, you would just delete that X and it would go into your archive folder for you. All right, and I'm gonna show you how to do all this stuff. And you'll get, to get a copy of this PowerPoint, just contact the loan professional that's sent you here and they'll be able to, uh, to do that. So I'm kind of the, this is a little bit of the boring part and then I'll get into the fun stuff here in just a minute. So waiting label. Typical emails that come in the, in, in the waiting folder are tracking code, GPS, FedEx, uh, packages coming your way. Examples include shipping, tracking labels, all that stuff. Uh, you delegated a task. So, like, say I sent an email to Mike today and said, hey, Mike, um, hey, uh, hey, let me know when this is done. I'd appreciate it. So I'm waiting. I want to make sure that, that I get a response from him. Or I, maybe you send a response going, hey, just giving you a weekly update on your listing presentation today, and you want to make sure you get a response from him so that they got the email. If they didn't respond, then they maybe didn't get it. Maybe it went to junk or whatever. Um, so you want to make sure that they get it, and that's just to put in the waiting label, all right? Examples include emails for virtual assistants, employees, anyone you're waiting to hear from, okay? So I send something out and I'm waiting for something to come back. I don't want to forget about it. It's very, very important. Could be, could be a paycheck. Confirmation from someone. Examples include asking another person if he or she received something from you, like an email, attachment, sales agreement, home inspection, a lot of different stuff. So if you send a home inspection out and you want to make sure that the seller got it, you, you want to put that in waiting to make sure that they reply because that's a communication type thing. So you want to be really careful with that stuff, okay? So you just put it, the waiting label in there and I'm going to share with you how that works in just a minute. Karen, any questions on that stuff that I've covered so far? All right. No, I think we're doing good so far. Okay, good. So the two-minute rule, here's the two-minute rule, and it's, you got to stick by this. And I'm going to, next week, this is a kind of a takeoff from this class, is next week I'm going to share with you guys a really cool way to get in your inbox and get out, and it's, and it's just really laser-focused. It's another system I'm going to share with you that sits right inside your inbox. So if you can get it done in less than two minutes, do it now, okay? This is going to allow you to blow through it. So the value of this rule is that you go through your inbox really fast and initially process only what is necessary. If someone needs a quick response, you take care of it. If an email needs to more attention, you can work on that later and prioritize which emails get the most attention. After your inbox is processed, you're at Gbox Zero, okay? So check your email, process inbox, you go down, takes two minutes or less, you reply folder, and you process inbox. Re right away, you put an email in archive folder, and you process inbox, okay? Huge time saver Gmail search. This is where every time I show this to somebody, it just blows their mind because this is when I said you don't need any labels except for the reply and the waiting. And let me just show you what I mean by this. So I'm going to go into my inbox really quick, and I have it open. You'll see I got a bunch of emails here just in the last at 12:02 they came in. But before that, I only had three, and I saved these two just so I could show you how to filter these emails. But let me just show you something. So say that I am searching for an email that has the number, well, let's just do one of these right here. So let's just go, it has the number $15. Remember, see this $15 right here? All right, so I'm going to search $15. And I'm going to go search everything, every email that has 15 in it. Well, I know that this one had 15 in it, but it, it was the very first one on the top It was because it was the newest. But guys, if I wanted to search an email from Karen or Mike, at the marketing animals, I can just put his email in here and I can search for every email from Mike Zinger or Mike at the marketing animals. If I wanted to search from an email from one of my buyers or one of my sellers or all I have to do is search their email or search their name. Now if I said, all right, I want to search every email that has Karen in it, okay? So I'm not even going to put her email in there. I'm just going to search Karen because I can't remember what her email is. Perfect. So I'm going to go search and every email that comes up, 
is has Karen in it. So I can go look really quickly through this, and there's only 170. Now, if you go back, I have literally thousands of emails, but that's how you make that work. So there's no reason to have all these emails down here. Now, you'll notice I have my reply and my waiting. Now, check this out. So say that I'm waiting for this guy to email me back, okay? So CJ Hayden, and this is one I'm going to filter because I don't want to see anymore. It's, to me, it's spam. So I'm going to go, I'm going to drag this waiting. See this? I'm going to left click on this, and I'm going to drag it. Can you guys see that? And I'm going to leave it set right in there, okay? And then I'm going to archive this email to get it out of my inbox because I'm waiting for him to respond to something that I emailed to him that I need an answer on, okay? But I want to make sure that I get the answer and then I can move forward with whatever I need to do. So, but I don't want it in my inbox, cluttering my inbox, all right? So I'm going to go, I'm going to go check this box and I'm going to archive it. And guess where it is, okay? I just archived it. I didn't delete it. I just archived it, but guess where it is? It's in my waiting folder, very first one, that shows there's his email. So I can really quickly go through my waiting folder and go, okay, he replied, he replied, he replied. If I click on it, there's a little thing that says remove label, and then it's going to go into archive and not be in my face at all. All right? Make sense? All right. So one thing that I want to share with you, if you, if you want to get rid of stuff so you don't see it anymore, like here's one. Here's one from Roger, and I'm sorry if Roger's on the call. I don't think he is, but it's just an email that I really don't need to see ever again. So I'm going to check this box. All right, check the box. A bunch of labels open up, and there's one opens up that says more. Now, this is how you get rid of your spam. This is how you get rid of emails you don't want to see anymore. This is how you get rid of literally stuff that shouldn't be in your inbox. It's just taking up space or taking up brain power because you got to, I mean, your mind has to process it. Is it an email? Is it not an email? Is it or not? So this is where you can literally clean stuff up. And the cool part is if you want to click literally 10, 15, 20, 30 emails at one time to filter, you, you can do that. And what I usually do is when you first start out, most of your emails are going to be spam. So when I do that, like say that all, all 11 of these are, and 10 of them are good, and, and like or maybe, maybe oh, 10 are bad and one is good, I'm going to go up here and click all, and then I'm going to uncheck the ones that are good, and then I'm going to archive and put into a filter all the other ones, okay? So you can really quickly go through and get rid of a lot of the stuff. So and then you can click none. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this, say that you got 10 spam, well, you probably have hundreds of, not thousands of spam emails coming in. So here's how you filter them so you never see them again. So you check the box. You click on more. You click on filter message like this, okay? It's going to open up a little box, and then what you want to do is create filter with this search, all right? So I want to click on that, and inside here, there's a lot of different stuff you can do. Now, this is, this is what I would do for my spam, is I would skip the inbox, and I would delete it, okay? So I'm not even going to see it. It's going to bypass my inbox. It's going to go right to the, the deleted folder, okay? Never going to see it again. Now, if you want to delegate, and you say, hey, every email that comes in from a buyer or a seller I'm not in the loop as an agent anymore. It goes to my assistant or my partner. And I know we have some broker owners on the phone. You can share with your with your um, with your team this way, so you can automatically go to the person that it needs to go to. So I would go skip inbox, forward to, and then I would pick a forward to person. And all you'd have to do is set it up, and they have to confirm that you're allowed to forward an email to them. So you can automatically have emails come in. Now you could have it come in still but automatically forward to the correct person that's going to be able to take care of that phone call or that paperwork or whatever it may be in the transaction so you're focused on money making activities and bringing more deals in the door, okay? So for this one, I'm going to go skip, delete, and I'm going to make sure down here because there's four of them that he sent me, and I'm going to click also apply filter to four matching conversations, and I'm going to create filter. Within a second, that email is gone, and I'll never see it again, okay? Pretty cool. So I do the same for this one, and uh, let's see, free ebook. So if somebody's trying to give me a free book. I probably don't want anything to do with it. Um, oh, so maybe someone emailed me free. Let's see, so so here, <laughs> this is the funny part. So someone took me up on my offer of the free ebook, and I don't have that set up automat anymore. So Sarah was looking for the free home buyer book, and she emailed me. Let me just show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna filter one more time to show you guys how to literally remove the spam from your inbox. And I would. The hardest part is going to be clearing your whole inbox out and starting fresh as they come in. It's going to take a little bit of work, but eventually your inbox is going to look like mine with only oh, 10 emails within the last 15, 20 minutes, 
and a lot of these are emails that I, this is somebody I work with, this is somebody I work with, this is somebody that's on the call right now as we speak. Agent Mastermind class, of course, is me, and Dave Brown is somebody I work with. So these are people that I actually physically work with. So those are emails I want to get. The other emails I don't care about. I don't. I want to get those out of my way so I can focus on money making activities. Get out. Of, get out of my inbox. And, and, and focus on my business. So I'm going to just filter this one really quick. So I'm going to check the box, filter, filter message like this, create filter. I'm going to skip the inbox, delete it, also all, and then create filter. All right, that one's gone. Great. Okay, so let's go back to my PowerPoint so I don't miss anything. So that is the search function. Search function is like sick powerful. You never will lose an email. Check this out. So let me just show you one other search function. So see this little drop down box right here? So if I drop this and I go, all right, I want to I want to find all emails from Mike at the Marketing Animals, and they have an attachment because I'm looking for an attachment that man I know he sent it to me. I know there's, it's a Word doc or a PDF or a PowerPoint, or whatever. I want to make sure that I get it. So Mike Zinger has attachment, and I don't know if I've got any. So here's all the see all these the attachments right here, attachment, attachment, attachment. So it's only showing me emails from Mike or with Mike's email in it that has an attachment. I literally don't have to put them in a folder and go, you know, somebody might, you know, back in the day when I first started doing this, I would maybe create a folder of Mike Zinger and then put all his emails into there and I'll have it automatically go there. I don't need to do that anymore because I can literally search for emails inside and I can search anything I want. So little drop down box from whatever, say you want to search an email you sent out, that you sent to, I want to search an email that I sent to my buyer, and the buyer's name was Kevin. You can search that. Includes the words like, so say I wanted to say, I want to uh, search an email from Mike Zinger, and it had the words Agent Mastermind. All right? Has, and it didn't have an attachment, but it just had Agent Mastermind. So here's all the emails from Mike or Mike's email that had Agent Mastermind in it. Okay? Really, really, really cool. No reason to create labels. You can search within seconds. Just like if you were in Google for your email inbox and you can search anything you want, all right? Any questions on that? Love that part. Okay. This just explains the search function of what I just went over live. So Gmail filters delegation, you can do that. Um, if you want to move, if, if you have folders and you want to move them, I'm not going to really cover that. Um, so to filter a message, I showed you that, so that's some cool stuff. And this is what it looks like. So it, it, it literally has step-by-step -step inside this PowerPoint. If you go, man, Scott, you went a little fast, um, you can just get a copy of this PowerPoint, uh, this PowerPoint contact the loan professional to send you here, okay? All right, so you can also slide labels if you want to, like, like I showed you. So, for example, say that I wanted to slide a uh, reply label. Maybe i I, I got to get back with Larissa. Where'd she go? Oops, let's go quick inbox. So maybe i got to get back with Larissa. And I, I, I need to do a little homework. So I need to reply to her, and I just need to do a little. I, I need to get with Mike and ask him a couple questions, then I can reply. But I want it out of my inbox because I want to get it to zero so I accomplish everything, and then I go back to that after I get them. Or, or maybe I'll forward one to Mike, and I'm waiting for an answer from him to go back and answer Larissa, okay? So th those are different ways. But all you got to do is literally left-click and slide them over, all right? Pretty crazy stuff, right? Okay, so if you want to create labels, feel free. You can have unlimited number of labels. You can have hundreds. I think I had at one time 200, almost 300 labels because I thought I needed to store stuff for quick access. It's so, so, so much quicker to just go search function, all right? Um, when you, if you want to use, this is pretty cool, if you want to use uh, uh, your, to, to, to your Google Docs, and we'll do a class on this eventually, but if you want to use Google Docs to insert documents into your email, They've actually added that right there. So here's the insert files using Drive. Let's say call it Drive. I still call it Google Docs because everybody knows what that is. So you just literally click there. It opens up your Google Drive or Docs or whatever you want to call it, uh, inbox where your files should be in the clouds and you can attach stuff from there. All right? I'm going to show you something pretty cool here in just a second. All right. Okay. Um, with with one Gmail address comes other Gmail addresses. And why would you want to know this? So. Say that you want to opt into something and you want to know if you get a response from it or if you want to know if they start spamming you. So I don't know if you knew this, but you can put S period, C period, O period, or zero period, T period, or whatever, however you want to do that, and it's going to still come to your email. You also get Google Mail. So you get scottybud23 at googlemail.com. So you get a bunch of different scenarios. 
and what I do when I opt into something, I may just throw a period in here so I know if I get a response, I know where it's coming from. Just one way to do that, okay? Um, one thing that I absolutely love, I would highly recommend this, and it's free of charge. Did I say free? Yeah, it's free. So WISE Stamp, W-I-S-E Stamp. Let me just show you what that is. So when you go to compose an email, of course, you want your signature to automatically be here automatically. So this right here allows me to create whatever signature I want and tie in my social media sites in a really cool way. Now, what you want to be careful of that I see a lot of people do is they put a picture in here. And the reason a picture is going to hurt you is because I can't open an email and automatically call you because I got to click on the picture and the picture just opens up to another picture and it doesn't allow me to call you. So all you know, a lot of people will put a really cool picture with their numbers in it and their email in it and their address in it. And to call you, I have to literally write down the number or memorize it and then call you. So be really careful with that. So this is how Y stamp works. This is so cool. So Y stamp gets you gives you a little tab inside Chrome and it works everywhere. But when you edit Y stamp, let me just I'm just going to open this up and show you live and I had pictures of this, but here's your personal signature and you would just put your name and, and address and license number or whatever you want to have here. And then what I would recommend is putting your social icons here. And you can choose, as you can see, I have Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, but you can choose all kinds of different ones, if you wish, that you can tie into your signature. So you have a really cool professional signature, one that somebody can actually click on and call you because your number's visible inside a phone, okay? And then, of course, just make sure you click Save and Exit, and then whatever you put here, you can literally go crazy with this. You can put in pictures. You can put in hyperlinks if you want. So if I wanted to hyperlink my number, uh, I could you know, hyperlink that and have it clickable to go some, wherever I wanted it to go. If you wanted to add HTML, you can do that. And guys, this is free. So it's a really cool signature, a free signature for many different uh, things, but I use it inside Gmail as well. All right? Now, one thing you want to do, if you use Wise Stamp, is to turn off the Gmail signature. And to do that, you just click on this little gear, click on Settings, and then, in general, you're going to notice right down here, scroll down enough, there's going to be a signature thing. So I said no signature. So just turn it off, all right? Just turn that part off. So you are using the Y step signature, not the Gmail signature, okay? All right. Any questions on that, Karen? Where, where do you go to, where do you go to so access Y stamp? Oh, great question. So if you go to ystamp.com, you're going to go there, and there's an upgrade. I've never had a use for the upgrade, so um, just make sure that it's still, I saw that right. Oops, let me just, uh, just search this here. So it's ystamp.com, email signatures. Claim your free signature now. So it's ystamp.com, all right? Perfect. Okay, so that's why stamp. Now, um, and also, let me just show you one more thing about Y-Stamp. If you wanted to create a separate signature, so Y-Stamp allows you to create two signatures. Let me just go back into the edit part of this. It has a personal and it has a business. So say that you have a personal account and you also have a business that's tied to the same email and you want to send with a different signature. So if you wanted to, so you would just click on the business part and then you would put in whatever signature you wanted here, and then when you're sending the email, I'm going to just cancel this, uh, discard, and when you're clicking compose, you got this email right here. Right down here it says Y stamp inside your email. You would just click business, and then you would choose the business address to send from. Of course, it's going to just do the signature part of it, but that'll allow you to have two separate signatures and not have to type anything out and go, okay, i got to put this and put, it there, put that. You can just save it automatically for you, all right? So I wanted to share that with you. Love that. Um, so that, yeah, and this shows you how to turn off the signature. Now, this is where, this is the coolest thing that I've ever seen. So last week we did Evernote, right? And if you're using Evernote, you're going to really, really, really love this. There were some Evernote freaks as well as myself on the call last week. And PowerBot for Gmail is what it is, okay? So as you can see, this thing is a little PowerBot, and it allows you to connect and add stuff to your Evernote, but also pull stuff 
from your Evernote or Dropbox account. Let me show you what I mean by this. So as you can see, it works in Outlook, Gmail, works in uh, Yahoo, I believe. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. So say that, let's just open up. She uh, here's she's giving me something right here. So say that I wanted to save these attachments, all these attachments to my Evernote account. Now I could email it to my Evernote account, absolutely, or I could just click on this little because I've downloaded PowerBot and have PowerBot and have it in my Gmail. See this little clip button right here? You guys are gonna love this. So clip. And then it opens up this little box, and it says, what do you want to do? Well, I want it to go to my Evernote account, and I want to choose what folder I want to put it in. So I'm going to put it in my Agent Mastermind folder. So I'm putting a note inside my notebook, and my notebook is Agent Mastermind. And I'm going to give a giveaway for our webinar. So she's, so she's going to be on class with us in two weeks, and she's going to show us some scripts or uh, excuse me, a strategy that she has used to literally get to a 98% referral business. So giveaway for our webinar on AMM. Now if I wanted to put a tag in here, I could do that. And then all I got to do is go clip to Evernote, and it's automatically going to put it in my Evernote account, which now is synced to all my phones. Really, really cool, organized. You guys love that? I just love that. You can also clip to your Dropbox account if you want to, if you want to sync your Dropbox account to it, okay? Here's the cool part about that. It is extremely cheap. Let me just go to play from start. So PowerBot, quickly archive individual messages, whole threads, or just attachments to the right Evernote notebooks or Dropbox folders. Insert files, notes, and notebooks into com com composed messages. So watch this. So say that I have a note, I'm, I'm storing all my documents in notebook, and I have a folder inside notebook that I want to send to Gail, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I got to send Gail back something, right? So right down in here, when I go reply, it says insert. If I click insert, it's going to go which one you want to pull it from. I want to pull it from Evernote. I'm not even leaving my inbox, and here's all of my folders. So I'm going to go to Agent Mastermind, and in Agent Mastermind, here's already my notes that I got from her. So I can click on that and give that to her. I can, or I can choose any other one that I want to give to her in an insert notebook. So I can give her, the, I can share with her the whole notebook. Now check this out if I do that. So if I click on that insert notebook. It's going to give a little link that actually goes to my Evernote account that she can now view with all those pictures in it that's in the clouds. Is that crazy? It's just it 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 it, it helps you get seriously organized and have everything in one place, Evernote or Dropbox, whichever you prefer, or both. I use both, but it allows you to just be really organized and have everything going the same way. All right. Just go to play from current. So PowerBot, love, love, love it. Um, so PowerBot, I think, let me just, you know, I, sh I was going to put the price here and I forgot. I think if you go to PowerBot for Gmail and just click on it, and let's just, oops, that's not going to help me there. That's and Actually, here's the cool part I want to show you guys. It actually gives you a login. So it shows which ones that I've done, sync, sync to Evernote, sync to, it shows me all the syncs that I have. So that's good. And then also, here's PowerBoat app. So here's the uh, PowerBoat, and I'm going to just go check pricing. I think it's like stupid cheap for the whole year. Uh, let's see. Where is it at? Um, Twitter. I want to say it's 15 for the whole year. I don't know why I can't. Let me just do this. PowerBoat for Gmail pricing. Actually, I know where it is. Let me go to here and then go to here. So um, why can't I find pricing? Okay, it's really it's like super cheap. So check twenty dollars a year. Twenty dollars a year. So twenty dollars for the whole year to be able to sync your Evernote and Dropbox account. All right. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate that. Okay, you guys ready for some more? I got another cool one that I just absolutely love. So the problem with Gmail is like there's no way to track your opens. There's no way to go. Well, I want to send this email, but I, it's two o'clock in the morning, and they're gonna, you know, like that's kind of crazy. And so I want to um, send it at eight a.m. or eight thirty a.m. Or you know what? I send these people an email, and I, and if they don't open it within two days, I want a reminder back that they didn't open my email. That's real important, right? I, you know, I send them a. I sent them a couple listings. They didn't even open it. That's kind of weird. Like I've, I've been talking to them. I met with them. I showed them a home. And I just sent them some information they requested.
but I have, they haven't opened it yet. So I want a reminder of that, maybe and however you want to set it. So check this out. Boomerang for Gmail is five bucks a month. So it's just this is so awesome. So with Boomerang, you can write an email now, today, and schedule it to be sent automatically at the perfect time. Just write the message as you normally would, then click the send later button, use our handy calendar picker or text box that understands language like next Monday to tell Boomerang when to send your message. We'll take it from there. The best follow-up reminders. Want to clean your inbox? but don't want to lose track of important messages, use Boomerang to take messages out of your inbox until you actually need them. Just click the Boomerang button when you have an email open and choose when you need it again. So say that, you know what, I don't need to respond to this till Friday. Well, then just tell Boomerang you don't want to respond till, till Friday and it'll put it back in your inbox. We'll bring it back in your inbox marked unread, starred, and even at the top of your message list. Okay? Pretty cool. Remind you, if you don't hear back, this is the one I'm just talking about, there are times you need to make sure you follow up with a specific time, after, uh, time frame after sending a message. You can select to only remind if nobody replies or regardless. This way you won't let, let messages slip through the cracks and, and we'll never forget to follow up with the people, okay? Read receipts. How about if, how about if you just want to know if they opened it? So it now has, and this is just recently added, it now has a read receipt and I'm going to show you that. So check this out. Five bucks a month. Let me just show you how this works. So I'm going to go to my email, and I want to send Karen an email. All right, Karen Brown, Karen at the Market of the Animals. And the cool part about this is, when I remember, I can insert, and then when I do, turn it off. Let me just, uh, I had it on before I left. Let me just compose. And it, you know what? I'm having a problem because I'm on this darn webinar here. Let me just go. It's right down below here. Um, get that out of the way. Let's see here. Let me try to open that up. Okay, there we go. Not, not, now you can see it. So typically it does weird stuff. So right down here when you open up the email, and I want to send it to Karen. And right down here it says send later. See that? So it says boomerang this. So I'm going to check the box, and in two days, in however you want, if no reply. Pretty cool, right? And you can actually, and it, it's, it's just not working right on this, but when I'm not on this webinar, it works great. And then the other thing down here is if you want to track the open, you just click this little box, and you can't even see it down there. But if you click it, it actually will put this little read receipt inside the email. So when she opens it, and then she responds or closes it, it's going to say, please give Scott a read receipt of this email he'd like to know. All right, so pretty, pretty cool there, pretty cool. So this actually opens up below, and it's not showing me, but amazing, amazing software that sets inside your Gmail so you don't have to leave. So you can send emails and say, you know what, I want to send an email right now, but I don't, you know, I just literally left the office, or I left a lunch meeting, or I left a, a showing of an appointment, and it's a little freaky if I send it, like, right now. So I'm going to wait, like, an hour. All right, so you can do that as well. Okay, so that's Boomerang for Gmail. Any questions on those two, PowerBot or Boomerang or Gmail period? We do have a question about PowerBot. Does it replace Evernote's Web Clipper? Uh, it does not replace. Here's the difference. No, that is a great question. So let's say that I'm playing around and I want to go to PowerBot's e email, and I, the, the Web Clipper is still going to be here. And that, that also, on four web pages, puts stuff into your Evernote account and it allows you to put them in the folders and stuff like that. Now, PowerBot is for inside your email, so you can put emails inside of different folders and stuff like that. So they're two different type things. Uh, although PowerBot would work on a websites and stuff too, but it's I mainly wanted to show up for your Gmail because this is the Web Clipper is so easy to use. Very good. All right. Cool. And of course, the Clipper is free, so there's no cost to use the Clipper. All right. Okay, so to finish this off, the hardest part, and this is the hardest part, you guys are going to have to make a choice. You're going to have to go in your inbox, and I bet you that I could log into most of the people on this call's in, like, inbox right now, and it says 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. What you're going to have to do is start somewhere. So you can literally go through each individual email and go, okay, okay, I let, I'll keep it, keep it, nope, keep it, keep it, nope, and it'll take you hours, or and I can't even realistically show you this, but if you click here and you choose all, 
And there's another little box that's going to show up right here that says all, which means all 3,000, 4,000. I've, I've seen people have 12,000 emails there. And so click that button and click the archive. Trust me, nothing bad's going to happen. You're not going to lose your inbox. What it's going to do is free up your inbox so that you can start fresh. If you need to find an email from a certain person or you want to keep one, two, three emails, go ahead and do it. But just remember, you can always search. You're not deleting these emails. They're just going into an archive folder that you can always pull back up. Now, if you have to go find them again, of course, you always have your all mail here. And this literally shows every single email you've ever received. So it's, it's there. It's just not physically. I mean, how, how gratifying would it be to go to your phone and not literally have any emails to do right now? So there's nothing for you to do except for pick up the phone and call your past clients, current clients update your files and process, maybe, I don't know, have lunch with a, a, a good referral partner, um, go meet with a new a prospect as a referral partner, get with your lender to you know test some marketing ideas or talk about some marketing ideas or talk about marketing to expire the class we did three weeks ago. I mean, that's money-making activity. So there's no money in your inbox. Yes, you're going to get an email and it's going to have a sales contract. Great. That's work you've already done or processed or they might have a question for you that you can get back on. But you have to take action as far as freeing up your inbox and starting fresh with these tools. So click the all button, click this little button that says all, and then it'll literally wipe out every single thing, not wipe out, it'll just get rid of out of your inbox. So if you can do that, I would love to see it on the private Facebook group. So here's what we, here's what we focus on, and it, it works for us. Because when you first wake up, you're the freshest, you, 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 got, you got a fresh mind, you just woke up, got your cup of coffee, we try not to get into our inbox because the problem with getting into our inbox first thing is if you got something in there that just doesn't set right with you, it's going to ruin your whole day. It's just going to start it off in a really bad format that you a lot of people can't recover from. So we recommend whatever you have to do today that's going to be money-making activities, calling your database, following up on past clients, following up on leads that come in over the night, Whatever it is, do those first thing in the morning when you're the freshest, and then jump into your inbox at 11 o'clock, 11:30. Whatever. I mean, and there's no right or wrong answer to this. I'm just saying, most people crack their crack their email open first thing. It's like, oh crap, I forgot I had to do this, or got to do this, got to. Nothing bad's going to happen. No one has ever died from not checking their email first thing in the morning. So 11 to 11:30 a.m. Process the emails. Pick a time and stick to it. I don't care if it's maybe you wake up at 5 a.m. and 9 o'clock is your time that you jump into your emails, whatever it is. 12.30 to 3.30, do other work. Whatever it is that you, you know, book the appointments. Book appointments around this. So 11 to 11.30, you just know that this is when I'm in my email box. I'm in and out of there. And, and when you get really good at this, it won't take you 30 minutes. You'll be 15 minutes and you're in and out. And then you're off doing something, you know, some money-making activities. 4 p.m. to 4.30 p.m., process the email again before you go home. And then... 4.30 to 4.45, manage to-do list based on task, worked on today. And, of course, you guys, you show homes in, in the evening when people are off work. So you're going to be doing that. And then just, like, let it go. When you go home, go home. Stay out of your inbox. Spend time with your family because, you know, we can't get that time back. If you got kids growing up or if you have family that you want to spend time with, just do that instead of being in this darn inbox. It's just, it's just not worth it. So that's what I have for you guys today. Let me just do one more thing here. I'm going to go one more slide. If you're joining us for the first time, uh, you're going to want to join us on our Facebook page, and I would love to see that you cleared your inbox out. So if you go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash agent mastermind, that is where there's 3,400 and growing, probably going to be 3,500 after today, uh, an amazing group, and I'm just honored to be a part of this group. And um, you guys ask a lot of good questions, so this is for you guys, agents on the call, to collaborate, ask questions. There's no stupid question. The one stupid question is the one you don't ask because there's so many people that want to help you here. So facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash agent mastermind. We are there to help you. There's other agents. There was 54 comments on one question with an agent. It was so cool to see the thread going back and forth, and it was late, it was late at night. So. I just, uh, it's just, it, I don't know, for me it's fun to, to see the questions, see people having success and uh, trying different things and stepping outside their comfort zone and jumping off the cliff and growing their wings on the way down and whatever it may be. So join us there. Ask any questions you might have. Next week we are going to cover one more thing 
inside Gmail, and then I'm going to cover a CRM system that sets inside Gmail, and then a database management system that I think you're really, really, really going to love that's super easy that literally you don't have to leave your inbox to uh, like to use it, and I think you'll just love it. So um, that's where we're at. Karen, any questions I can answer? We did have a number of questions come through about the difference between archive and delete. Um, okay. Now, so I personally, yeah, I personally don't ever delete anything. The only time, like, every once in a while, I'll, I'll, I'll click the spam button, then you're not supposed to see it. But I like creating filters because uh, here, here's, here's a little lesson that I've learned. Say that I open Grand Traverse Resort, and I'm going to use this, you know, for uh, we do some vacationing there. So at the very bottom, there's always an unsubscribe. Here's what you have to be careful of. The unsubscribe button for some services triggers that it's a live email address, okay? Because they don't know if they're sending to a live one or if it's even an email that exists anymore. They just don't know. So if you click that unsubscribe, it's almost like a, woohoo, we got a new one, and then they go and sell your email to a bunch of other people, and then you get a bunch more spam, okay? So I would prefer you not click the unsubscribe. I would prefer you go, all right, let's, let's, let's filter this message. And just leave it the way it is. Let them think that I'm not a what. Let them keep sending, but I just don't want to see it anymore. So create filter, skip inbox, and then delete. Um, and if you delete it, here's the crazy part about the delete button: is Gmail. I think there's a setting in here. I'd have to look it up, and I can post on the Agent Measurement page. It actually sits in your deleted folder for quite a while. And what you're going to find is it's mostly spam in there. I personally, with as much storage that Gmail gives me. I never delete an email. There's just no reason to because they give you seven gig worth of free email sort like storage. And if you want to buy more storage, it's literally five bucks for 20 gig. And I have yet to fill up 20 gig worth of emails, and I send and receive a ton of emails. Okay, so I, I never really feel the need to delete. Now, if you ever want to delete, or if you ever one thing you might want to delete is your sent folder. Or see my spam folder has 699 spams in it. You could always go delete those. Um, your drafts, that, that's another story. We won't, we won't focus on that. But um, the, the, there's, there, I mean, if you wanted to go delete, you could. There's, it's really not necessary. Gmail automatically purges after 30 days as well. So if, if you are deleting, it will end up freeing up after that 30-day mark. Right. So another, we've had a couple other questions. Uh, a number of people are asking, how do you set up your other email addresses to come into Gmail? And that depends on the service that you're using. So if you are using Outlook, for example, you'll need to set up a, a forwarding from your Outlook email to go into Gmail. But that also ties in with um, another question that a lot of people are asking about can you send from Gmail using a different email address than your than your particular Gmail account and the answer to that is yes you can yes. choose you can enter in multiple email addresses as long as you can confirm their account meaning you have access to that and can enter in a confirmation number that's under the settings and you can go in there and add multiple accounts so that you have several different email addresses that you can be sending email as, uh, just like right there where it says send mail as, uh, you add another email address in there, and then when you're composing a message, it gives you a little drop down that you can choose which email address you want to send it as. So very easy so, to do. Yeah, so for example, I have uh, my son's email in here, greg at greghudspeth.com. I did this for a demo. So, and I'm checking his email inside of the account. So, for example, if I wanted to send from Greg, like, and th th this is a great question. So, two things. One is you can, yes, you can send from any email you want. Like I said, I can send from Scott at scotthudspeth.com. So, when you do that, see this little, see this little mark over here that says make default? Whatever you, wh whatever, whatever email, like if I wanted to ch make default, it would automatically go from Greg at greghudspeth.com. I have it at scott at us.com. So if I wanted to make this default, if I go to compose an email, it's going to come from Greg. But if I wanted to change back to Scott, I, I would just do this little drop-down box here, and then I would click Scott, and I would say it would send from Scott. So I can actually choose right before I send the email, or I can make it a default setting inside my actual settings. Now, how to forward an email from? Say that I'm. Say that, let, let's pretend that I'm in homebuyerbook at gmail.com. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the settings tab, 
the little gear. I'm going to click on settings, and then I'm going to click forward. And inside the forward, I'm going to go forward a copy of Scott at homebuyerbook at gmail.com to scott at us.com or scottybug23 at gmail.com, whatever. So you would set up a forward, and then it's going to have you, like Karen said, confirm that you own that email address. And then once you do all of those, all your emails come into one. And as, like, say, for example, if I send from, and let me just show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to go back out, and I'm going to show you one of the um, ladies on our class, Brenda. This is a great, I'm glad she did this, but see how the, um, it's not going to show that it came in, but she asked for the home buyer book. Okay, that was a different question, so I'm going to scratch on that. But if somebody, if I send an email to homebuyerbook at gmail.com, I don't want to take up your guys' time with this, but if I do this, uh, I just send it. So it should forward automatically into my Scotty, Scotty about 23 which is now forwarding to scottyus.com. So let me see if it comes in while you guys are on the call. Does that make sense? So, so eventually you could have all your emails coming into one email account, which is, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that, that definitely works. And that's a huge time saver. And then you don't have three emails, four emails coming into your, uh, your um, phone as well. Because I've seen a bunch of people with their phones, and they, they, have, uh, they have three or four email accounts inside there, which, is, which sometimes can be annoying. All right? Very cool. Scott, is the, one more quick question that we've had a lot of people asking. You have a different background with the email me. Is that a corporate Gmail account? Yeah, back that is not that is um, way back when when I when I was searching email addresses, I searched for Scott at US dot and email me used to sell email accounts. Uh, they don't they don't sell them anymore. That's how I was able to get the Scott at US dot com. So that's just a different that's a setup that they had when I when I bought this a couple years ago. Okay, very cool. But if and you want to change if you want to change the background to your Gmail account, like I, I have this dark blue. If you click on settings right here, and then you click on theme. Themes. There's a bunch of themes inside here that you can choose from that are really cool. So, all right. And honestly, everybody, I mean, we could go on and on. There's so many cool features inside of Gmail. Some, some couple people were just asking about canned responses. That's under labs. That's a feature that you have to go activate. And then once you do, you can set up canned responses to use. These, these labs are all other features that you can add to your account. Another person was asking for confirmation about how you can set up which labels you want to show up, and that's under the label section in settings. You just choose yep. which labels. You, there's a button that says show or do not show, and you just go through and specify those there, show or hide. I couldn't remember, or show yeah. if show if on red. So it's all very customizable. You really can set it up for your liking. And as you can see, Scott just has those particular ones showing up on the left. And everything is still there, but you just have yeah. to click on more to see everything else. It's a lot less distracting for you to not have everything else in front of your face saying, oh, I have 700 spam messages. Where are those coming from? Or things <laughs> right, like that. Right. So. right, like, I mean, I mean so get this. So, so if I was to show, like, if I was to show... Now I would have the spam showing 700 spams. I just I really don't care about that, so that's why I don't have it show. So that's why I go to spam and I put hide, and then it just hides it from me because I don't care about that stuff. Absolutely, and you can right. set up filters that automatically send certain emails into labels, and it is really you can do pretty much anything and everything that you want with uh, with Gmail. It's a really great system. So, so I just sent that email to Homebuyer Book from Scotty. So here's what here's what came back. So I, I do have, if you guys want to check this out, I do have the automated um, email set up. So if you send a, an email to Scotty or to homebuyerbook at gmail.com, this is what comes back. And then obviously, see how the homebuyer came into my email. So from Scott to, so it comes it comes to me. So it's 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 still set up. If you guys want to get a copy of it. All right, free gift from me to you. All right. So uh, go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash agent mastermind if you're not already a member. Love, would love to have you guys as part of the group. Nothing's being sold. And uh, please don't sell anything on there. You will be asked to leave and you'll be actually deleted from the thing. So it's not about selling stuff. It's about helping you guys grow your business, double your business, triple your business. Have freedom. And that's what we want. So if you would like a copy of this recording and the PowerPoint, get with the loan professional that's sent to the class. And we will be more than happy to get you a copy of this. Uh, over and the recordings are usually up by tomorrow so you should be able to listen to it over the weekend if you wish all right 
Thanks so much, everybody. Appreciate you guys. Karen, Mike, appreciate you guys. Thanks for the help. And we'll see you guys right here next week on Agent Mastermind. Take care, everybody. Be safe. The organizer has ended the session, and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye.